Hey everyone, my name is Diana Huitrago. This is a video I made originally in April 2020 for a private school in Mexico City. This video was uh, initially intended to be just uh, for uh, the students of the atelier. And um, the purpose of the video was to uh, show the students how could they paint from life in their houses without necessarily having a professional environment and all the elements that we can find in an atelier or a studio. Um, so in my case, I decided to set up a still life using um, a bowl that I found in my kitchen, um, sardines, and a lime. So welcome to my living room. Here I have a very, um, you know, my easel with the uh, paper and my palette and uh, table where I organize my tools and as you can see it's a very simple still life what I'm trying to do right there is to block any bounce light from the ceiling or from any other uh, space in the living room um, so that the light that comes from my window at four or five degree angle it's the only light source that illuminates um, the fish the bowl the table uh, and it's really simple and gives me clear shadows and clear light shapes. Design and composition is really important when you're going to paint um, a larger project um, that's going to take you a couple of days. So why not spend a little bit of time before starting to paint? Uh, kind of like arranging the composition and thinking about where are you going to put these elements on the picture plane. So what I like to do, and this is something I do also when I go out and paint landscapes, is I like to design a simple grid and this is a very simple grid. It also it only um, divides um, divides it in four, uh, but you can see the half the halfway of the grid. So you can definitely like play around with the elements. Like in this um, in this one, for example, I was thinking about putting the element in the middle of the grid, in the middle of my of my design, uh, but throw a cast shadow that um, that looks. Um, the design is diagonal and it kind of like almost uh, you can see like it almost like uh, follows the line of the tail of the fish so that whole thing is going to be in shadow and the background against um, uh, the design of the of the of the light part that is going to be um, in the uh, lower right corner of the uh, of this particular design so I kind of like the, the the design of light and shadow um, you could also go ahead and, and, you know, invest a little bit of more time. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a white chalk. Um, and um, I'm also putting, like, where are going to be my accents in light? Where are going to be my darks? Uh, like, for example, right here you're going to see that I am um, going to show, I'm showing the direction of the light um, and the shadow on the fish. That's going to be one of my darker shadows. Um, and so, yeah, design these, um, you know, spend a little bit of time designing these little thumbnail sketches because you can see um, a little bit of how your, your um, overall design is going to look or maybe like just get an idea, you know, it's not going to be exactly like that. You're going to be able to give yourself some space to improvisation along, um, along the painting process, but having this in mind, it's going to pay off. Um, during you know during the painting um, during the days that you're gonna spend uh, painting so although I really like the first uh, design it just feels more natural for me it was what it caught my eye first so I wanted to um, just give myself uh, an opportunity to you know play around with the composition a little bit more so I made a couple more thumbnail sketches, but um, at the end I decided to uh, pursue the first initial um, idea. So the first one is the one I'm going to paint. OK, 
Okay, so in this chapter, uh, we're going to focus on color. Uh, so for this purpose, we're going to do a color study. And we're going to talk about my colors um, and the organization of these colors in the palette. So in order, I usually have two whites, titanium white and lead white. After the lead white, I like to put the color that is closer in value to the white. So that would be lead tint yellow light. Right after that, I have a color that I don't usually uh, have in my palette, but for this still life I need, and that's uh, cadmium yellow medium. And this one is yellow ochre. That's my main yellow. Right next to yellow ochre, I have raw sienna, and immediately after raw sienna, cat red light. I don't have vermilion, but vermilion would be a very good color to replace cat red light. Burnt sienna. Um, after burnt sienna, uh, I have a lizard crimson, and cobalt blue, and chrome oxide green, red umber, raw umber, and ivory black. In these two cups, it's usually usually want to have a little bit of turpenoid or any other less mineral spirits um, in one in one part of the cup, and in the other one you want to have some kind of oil or medium. I like to use linseed oil, cold press, and um, I also like to have this little jar that I fill with um, half and half, so half turpenoid, half linseed oil. And that's a nice medium to, um, to use for the first layer of painting in color. Uh, we're we're going to talk about that um, a little bit later. So um, right now I'm going to start the poster study in color. But um, let's go back to the idea of organizing the palette um, and the way I do it. As you can see, I, I'm organizing the palette from dark to lights and um, this comes from the idea of um, you know keeping in mind the values the importance of uh, understanding values before uh, color temperatures or before um, any other elements of color like chroma right so for me value is um, it's it's more important it comes first uh, so I think about value every time I think about um, a moment in the in what I'm painting, I always ask myself, what's the value of it? Then what's the hue? Hue means what color it is. It is, a, is, it, is it a red, is it a blue, is it a yellow, is it an orange? You know? um, and after that, my third question is, um, you know, what's the temperature of, the, of, this, of this note? Is it warm, is it cool? Um, um, and what's the chroma? It's a, is it super saturated? It's a high chroma color or it's a more neutral. Um, so always, always my palette is organized in this matter from dark to light because I am more oriented to think about value first and then uh, color elements. So there are two things you want to keep in mind when doing the course of study. Uh, the first one is, as we were saying, um, you know, think about value first. Um, you know, what's the value of the uh, color note that you're that you're painting? Um, then find the local of it. So is it is it white? Is it blue? Um, usually, you know, objects like the, for example, the bowl. Uh, it has one one local, so it's a little bit easier because it's a little bit white. Um, but the fish, for example, has a has a, has a little bit. It's a little bit more difficult because it has, you know, it's a little bit blue. It has a, a little bit of red and yellow. So um, keep this keep this poster studies pretty simple. Have the relationship uh, flat, and don't don't render too much. I mean, don't you don't necessarily need to render in, in 
make these poster studies um, a, a miniature uh, detail painting, really. Um, so keep it simple. Think about um, local, local color, um, value, um, and intensity of the color. Is it more chromatic? Is it less chromatic? Uh, and the temperature. And put the put the put the relationship of these notes right next to each other. Include the whole environment. Include the whole composition. Try to put, uh, you know, try to paint the sardines, the bowl, whatever you're painting, and the relationship with the background, with the uh, with the um, uh, surface that, uh, that is uh, that is resting on um, the shadow, the cast shadow, all that, but do it very flat, posterize, so that you see the relationship, um, the relationship of color right next to each other. The other thing you want to keep in mind is, um, and then you see me here using a little bit of um, medium. You don't really necessarily have to use a lot of medium in this in this step. Um, I, I, I basically use it um, when the painting is really thick, maybe some of these paintings, some of these tubes um, are a little bit thick and, and maybe it's hard to um, you know, uh, move my painting around, but overall I'm not using any media, I don't want this, uh, my mixture in my paint, in my palette to be really runny and I want to apply the painting really thickly so I can see the whole, um, the whole color without any transparency. Um, and that's the only way you wanna you wanna do this uh, this poster study. So if you keep in mind those um, those couple of things that I just mentioned, uh, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy doing uh, many many poster studies. Um, I just did one for this exercise, but uh, I mean feel free to just design as many as you as you want depending on the project you have. One of the things that caught my attention. And I really was uh, impressed uh, when I visited the uh, Musée d'Orsay in Paris. If seeing the whole wall of uh, uh, color studies um, in the, um, you know, in the first, uh, I think it's the first floor where uh, are these uh, the painting of the um, uh, students of the Academy de Beaux Arts. And there's so many, so many small poster studies of uh, big compositions that, that were made by the students uh, when they were um, uh, uh, doing the um, or, or competing for the Prix de Rome. And so, I mean, they're they're amazing. Um, um, they really help uh, understanding the relationship of colors. They really give you an idea of what you need to uh, or how your painting is going to is going to look and it gives you just an opportunity to um, to play around with um, with the composition in terms of in terms of um, color and um, and also um, obviously with all the elements of colors uh, which we just uh, mentioned before so um, so I think you should give it a try and uh, you know design as many as you can so just have fun with So I've decided that I want to approach my blocking um, using uh, direct painting on, on, on the panel. Um, by the way, I'm using a, this is a, a, a dye bomb panel that I prepare with um, acrylic gesso. And there are more videos on how to prepare the panel 
also in my channel so if you want to go and take a look at those uh, but in in this in this process um, yeah so I'm trying to paint directly with uh, with my brush and uh, using only raw umber and a little bit of terpenoid so you don't really need to use any oil in this step um, I'm trusting my eye basically what I'm what I'm doing is just you know putting some marks down uh, top and bottom and just trying to get get the whole get the shape of the bowl um, the overall the overall shape but right after you have some marks on your on your panel on your on your surface you want to um, make sure that you know the proportions are, are right because um, I mean the, the the more blockings you do the better you get at uh, judging proportions and distances but um, you know sometimes you have to maybe stop a little bit um, take a step back and and just um, uh, you know just get a couple of measurements down so I don't I don't use that many measurements uh, what I what I usually do is um, you know I establish my top and bottom of the object that I'm painting and right after I establish the top and bottom I find the halfway and so I, I, I noticed that the halfway point um, was exactly like I'm, I was sitting uh, and I'm, I was seeing that bowl exactly in, uh, in a way that I that the halfway point uh, landed on the uh, edge that it was closer to me the edge of the bowl that was close to me and that was really nice because I could definitely mark where was the halfway point and I you know so I divided basically the ha the, the ball in half and that's that's how I want I was seeing it so it depends on where you are uh, how you're see, uh, seeing the the object you know if you're seeing a little bit more in perspective then the aperture of the ball would be a little bit a little bit closer maybe a little bit if I'm seeing the ball from above then I'm seeing less of the base and etc but so I found that the halfway halfway point was um, that edge and then one once I have the halfway point then I can find the width of the bowl so what I um, what I do with the width is I, that I compare the height with the width so I, I find um, what's the width again uh, or how many times the height um, fits in the width of the bowl so I, I, I measure that um, from nature using a, a stick or a measuring tool that it can be something like a, it can be your brush it could be a pencil it can be like um, a barbecue skewer um, a, 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 a needle or something long and uh, skinny that you could you could close one eye um, hold your arm straight um, against the object and you know, check check the the height and uh, compared to the width. So this is called comparative measurements. So those are the only measurements that I that I take. Um, halfway point, height to width. Uh, when you when you do a blocking, also you want to keep in mind that you know your first couple lines they should be uh, simple lines that you can construct uh, curvature. And angles uh, easily without you know complicating um, without complicating the design too much so that's what I try to use always um, straight lines at the beginning you saw me doing you know like trying to like um, uh, establishing my my proportion using straight lines at the beginning and, and now that I'm a, a little bit more invested in the blocking I can start getting uh, designing more uh, the drawing using uh, some lines that are that are a little bit more specific and getting the curvature of the bowl um, and also giving this drawing some value um, and some tone and so that's that's the other step you want to have you want to maybe um, once you establish where is your shadow um, and where is the light and uh, you know the light is coming from 45 degree angle so uh, the bowl is is um, it has um, a part that it doesn't get any any light at all so that's going to be a shadow 
yeah, but it does a part that it gets a lot of light so that's that's gonna be my light shape This is my way of seeing um, the blocking in uh, the direct blocking. I don't want my direct blocking in painting to be just just linear. I want my direct my, my blocking to be also um, a tonal blocking, especially because I'm gonna paint and painting it's it's a lot about tone as well. So I want to establish this tone um, early on in the blocking. So that's why I'm trying now that I that I have like the overall. Um, uh, linear structure of the of the drawing I'm also giving this blocking a false a false value with romber diluted with a little bit of terpenoid I'm not gonna use um, any opaque painting, so that means no white in this in this step. Only, uh, you know, if you want uh, uh, the light parts to be uh, lighter, just wipe off, wipe off the excess of uh, of the of the raw bevel to paint. Just kind of like a like a charcoal drawing. That's how it works. So this is called uh, open grease eye, where you leave where you leave some some spaces. Um, pretty much open with without any opacity without any any white uh, and it's different from closed grease high closed grease high it's it's a full complete grease high in tones that you use maybe you use romber and white or you use some kind of like a uh, a gray tone uh, for for rendering your whole um, your whole first first layer but this is basically a tonal blocking that it's gonna serve me pretty well for my next layer uh, of painting the form. <music> Thank you. 
So here I am preparing for my first uh, layer of foam pass with, uh, with color. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to pre-mix, trying to get some, some um, piles of paint that I can use as a base for, uh, for rendering the form basically. So um, in this case, the, uh, the color study is really useful because I can, you know, try to get the overall uh, tone and note that I use, for example, in the background and you know, on the table, in the shadow, the overall color um, of, the, um, of the bowl and maybe the gray tone of the fish. And I can make a bigger pile and um, you know just put it on the palette so that I can use that to um, to paint and to um, basically just start painting and adjust the color it never happens that you made the the, the piles perfectly and you just use you know um, the color that uh, like a little pile and just put it there you have to always adjust the um, the, the, the premix uh, tones that you make. So the premix is just a, a, it helps you get there, but it also have to, you also have to, um, to um, paint and adjust uh, that color. Um, I usually don't premix too much. So I usually, um, you know, I like to, uh, to mix with the, with the brush, uh, to be honest, but I, in terms of discipline to to paint, and when I was uh, learning, do uh, you know premixing the color was really useful for me. Mm -hmm. Just uh, uh, you know, particularly, uh, just re it really helped me to uh, to get like the first to get my my my, my foot on the on the, on the you know on the door um, to start painting. So uh, just just to have a couple, it, it won't be, it won't be bad. Um, keep in mind that you know painting is overwhelming, and you are going to see a lot of local colors. Obviously, uh, doing the color study is going to help you a lot uh, to start your 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 painting. Um, but try it also to. Um, to go from general to specific, try to paint, you know, try to maybe squint um, and step back and paint the bigger shapes uh, or paint the big general forms before you paint uh, details or uh, specificities. Like you don't want to start, you don't want to start painting like the um, you know, like the little um, um, details on the on the skin of the of, of the of the lemon. You don't want. I don't want to start painting the um, the scales of the fish. What I'm focusing right now is just to get the overall bigger form uh, of the bowl, for example. Just get to get the overall uh, form of the uh, of the fish. The overall. Uh, tone and color of uh, and degradation, like the big gradation that exists on the background. So that's that's what I am going to do in this first um, part of the first uh, uh, form pass, right? So uh, I'm going to spend, I don't know, like a whole full session, so three or four hours rendering this. And you'll see me working always from general to specific form by form that means one section at a time and then move on to the second section um, until I have everything covered and I can keep painting while everything is wet and I can get a little bit more specific a little more specific until the end of the session um, and then just you know kind of like have a, a almost finished painting by the end of today because this is going to be only a, a three-day uh, painting session including the lock-in so two days of uh, form color 
um, and one day blocking. So right now, um, as you can see in my palette, uh, going back to the idea of always thinking about value first, um, you see how I'm organizing the uh, degradations in the palette. So my gradations are based on, um, on, on the value, right? So always uh, you'll see me going darker and gradually lighter or see you you'll see me moving my brush from light from the light shape towards the darker shapes gradually kind of like trying to think about the form and the topography of the object that I'm painting in this case let's put an example the bowl that I'm painting the local is is white um, the shadow I already uh, have uh, a pile, a premix pile for the shadow. So I'm gonna try to keep the shadow pretty nice and flat, and um, so that means like I'm gonna just try to get the overall uh, value of the shadow without thinking about reflected light or anything, um, without trying to render the shadow. Shadows are actually, you know, everything in the shadow uh, has to be closer in value. So. Uh, there's no light in the shadow except for a secondary bounce light, right? Um, so you don't really need to uh, render and have too many uh, contrast in the shadows. The, the more you have the shadows simple, the better you can uh, express the volume and the form and the gradations and the light, right? So if you have your shadows too noisy, and your light is also noisy, everything is gonna become like really heavy and noisy in your painting. So try to have try to have that shadow kind of flat and maybe you know you're gonna put some those those reflected lights are gonna be there. But try to leave that for the for the end of the painting. So try to focus right now on the form in the lights. When you think about the form, I think about the light source first. So you, you wanna you wanna try to you know, imagine, uh, so in this case, I'm imagining the light traveling uh, through the window and shooting uh, directly over the bowl. So I'm seeing that the form of the bowl, um, you know, is concave and convex at the same time. So there's some parts that are, that are uh, round. Um, so even though it's round, we can, we can simplify that, that, um, spherical and roundness with uh, uh, flat planes right those planes um, are some of them are more are facing more directly towards the light source some others are actually turning away uh, away the light source and going towards the shadow so when you think about planes you think about uh, gradations in value so the plane that is more that is facing more uh, perpendicular to the light source that's going to be your lightest value so in my in my in my palette i'm gradating also from dark to light so i know that the the, the pile that is lighter and it's a little bit white and has a little bit of yellow that's going to be the lightest part of the bowl so i'm going to put that in as I'm going darker towards the shadow, I'm dragging my brush in the same gradation of my palette towards the darker or middle tones. And little by little, I can construct and turn the form and render uh, the object with paint, thinking about value. Um, and then um, later on, I can get a little bit more of the uh, specific parts that I am maybe not really paying attention too much right now, right? So try to get the overall form. So you see that I'm focusing on the bowl right now. I'm not really jumping from the bowl to the fish, from the fish to the background. So I'm trying to really get like part by part. So focusing on the bowl, I already rendered the um, uh, the convexity of the bowl, the part that is a little bit more round, 
that it gets a lot of light. Now I'm trying to get the concavity uh, of the back part of the bowl. And it also, there's also the same gradation from dark towards light. So you see that it's like lighter on the left side. Then there's a half tone, so a little bit less light. And then it, and then there's a plane that is not facing the light. So that gradation gives gives the sensation or the um, you know just the illusion of the form that I'm trying to render. Another way to think about form uh, when we are rendering is to imagine that um, we have to sculpt uh, uh, the object in clay and how would how would I um, you know give um, the form uh, by tooling or uh, by taking off some some clay and by adding and giving a little bit more volume to the form and how would I um, you know have the feeling or sensation of the form and the topography so I can I can really pay attention to how softer is this uh, turn, uh, how, how rapidly this form turns towards the shadow, for example. So um, it is a really more conceptual way to think about form than optically, because uh, we're not trying to match um, values um, or to just copy values as they appear in nature. It's really trying to conceptualize the form so we don't get tricked by optical illusions. Um, another nice way to think about form is imagine that you're actually a little person walking on top of each form. All right, so right after that, that I, you see I have kind of like the overall form of the bowl. Um, I'm moving on to the, to the, uh, the lemon. And my, my local lemon is different. So um, the local color, it's, um, it changes hue. So it's not, gonna, it's not white anymore, it's a uh, different hue. It's yellow now. Mm, I'm doing also, on that part of the palette, I'm also mixing the uh, gradation from dark to light. So on this, on this um, form that I'm painting, you'll see, you'll see that the uh, part of the skin of the lemon that receives more light is the one that is closer to us. That's the part that it, it is, the, the, the plane of, of that form it's, it's more directly towards the light source. So that's gonna be my lightest part, my lightest part of the, of the form. Right after that, I'm trying to think about the topography of that, of, that, uh, of that skin, right? So as it goes down towards the table, it actually is actually turning a little bit darker because the planes are also um, changing their angle and they're not facing anymore or not closer towards the light, they're like turning away uh, from the light source. So now they're turning towards the, towards the, the table and um, the value is getting darker gradually. Uh, and maybe I forgot to, to say something about um, what medium I'm using right now. So I'm, I'm using the half and half medium, which is uh, half terpenoid, half linseed oil. Um, so at the beginning, you guys remember the blocking, we did it with only terpenoid. So that was our lean, lean layer. Um, now we're going towards uh, the fat layers, but this is not yet fat, this is half and half. So we're trying to paint fat over lean. So the first layers are lean, and then from the next layer is half and half, and the final layer is going to be a little bit more oily.
So the fish, again, the local is a little bit different now. Um, you know, this is when it gets a little bit tricky because the fish has many, uh, many different uh, colors and it's not only blue. So it, um, you know, it has that many different uh, notes of color. So you want to, I mean, what do you do when you do, when you paint, when you paint skin, when you paint uh, something like that, you know, when you paint a person. What I do is I try to simplify my, my mixtures that I, that I have in my palette. So um, I have a, a pile that is um, a middle tone blue that I made with uh, cobalt blue ivory black, a little bit of bronzer to neutralize, and white, then I can start gradating that from dark to light and think about, about the form. And don't get too um, caught up on, on little shifts in, in color. Uh, maybe I don't want to copy um, values uh, like they appear in, in nature. Maybe I don't want to um, you know, copy all the colors uh, because I'm just trying to, to copy um, everything as it appears. As I'm seeing them, maybe what I want to do is I want to stay away from just copy everything, but more, um, I want to more conceptualize the form um, and just stay on the form and relay my color uh, from dark to light with some changes a little bit of changes in here, you know, like if there's a little bit of shifts in yellow maybe a little bit uh, of more red here um, But really just thinking more about about the value relationship and um, in terms of form stay away from too much distraction um, That it appears in nature because in nature can be really really overwhelming uh, so you want to maybe resolve the bigger, bigger form first, and then maybe you want to zoom in and get those specificities that you're seeing uh, when you work from uh, from your model, from your uh, from your still life. Um, so definitely, um, I think that's what I do um, to avoid maybe too much confusion at the first, at the beginning of of the painting. So what you're gonna see in this part. And this is a pretty long chapter because um, this is where I'm trying to kind of like complete the whole painting in, in one day. Um, this is my way of rendering every single thing and maybe take it as, as far as I can get. Uh, so right now, for example, once, that I, once I actually finish the form, the bigger form of the fish, now I'm, I'm changing so Now I'm putting like you know the, the the reds in the fish a little bit more of the scale in the fish um, some sharper moments um, changing my my brush to uh, maybe a, a thinner brush um, that i can i can push on uh, smaller details uh, getting some of these um, um, highlights in the fish highlights in the bowls um, so these are really um, you know, it's part of the painting, but it comes right after you determine the, the first uh, value gradation that it will give you the volume uh, of, the, um, of the object that you're trying to, to paint.
So at this point, I'm almost done with the uh, with this first uh, form pass, and as you can see, I'm stepping away from using too much half and half right now uh, because as I'm applying the paint, um, it actually doesn't need too much half and half. So I can actually use my uh, the piles that I'm using a little bit more um, straightforward without uh, too many mediums, so that I can. Uh, laying the paint without taking off the first layer that is still wet. Um, I'm also applying a little bit the painting a little more thickly in the lights, creating some kind of early impasto. Uh, the shadows are still very transparent, especially the cast shadow. The, the the shadow in the bowl is a little bit opaque because of the of the white. You know, the local of the bowl um, is white, so it has more opacity. But I'm also trying to soften it and, and getting some transitions um, in, uh, during this stage. Uh, so I'm thinking about the transition of um, the contour of the uh, edge of the uh, part in the shadow of the bowl against the shadow of the, um, the table that uh, there's a cast shadow right there. So there's two shadows. Uh, right next to each other, uh, one form shadow and one cast shadow, and so those are two shadows. Shadows don't have any any uh, light, right? Only uh, bounce light, but still shadows. So I want the shadows. I want these two shadows to be a little bit closer in value, um, as opposed to the edge of um, the light part of the bowl against uh, the light part of the table right that's going to be a little bit more um there's going to be like a little bit more contrast between dark um, or kind of like a middle tone and, and light plane so um that's exactly what i'm doing like i'm pushing a little bit the edge darker around this light part of the wall just to give it a little more contrast so I'm, I'm, I'm playing a little bit more contrast now, contour, softening edges using dry brush to maybe uh, drag a little bit my paint and getting a little more of the effect of soft of softer uh, transitions and um, as well as sharp sharper edges. Um, so yeah, um, almost at the end of my first day. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry over two nights and come back for the last uh, final stage of the painting. In this final layer of painting, I'm going to spend one session uh, getting more details and uh, trying also to uh, work some impastos, uh, applying a little bit thicker painting, and um, also some some glazing, uh, which is a transparency uh, application, oily application on on a dry surface. But before I do all this, and before I I you know start painting and establish uh, what values do I need to maybe push a little bit lighter, or if I need to stretch my value range, or you know, make some accents, which is gonna be a little bit darker. Before I do all this, and I uh, try to like get an evaluation of how my painting is looking, uh, before I do that, I need to oil 
my painting out. So the painting is completely dry. It's been drying for I think two nights. Um, so it's dry to the touch. Um, uh, I want to make sure that is that that you know the painting is um, it's gonna not, not gonna get damaged by by what I'm doing right now, which is applying a thinner, very thin layer of half and half half terpenoid and half linseed oil. So do you guys remember the little jar at the beginning of the of the materials chapter that I that I had? That little jar was the same one we used for um, the first layer of foam pass in color. So I'm using that also to oil it out because I don't want to oil it out with um, with uh, uh, a thick uh, layer of linseed oil. Uh, linseed oil is pretty pretty yellow, although I'm using a really good um, clean linseed oil. Um, you want to avoid to 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 oil it out with um, with any uh, yellow layer of, of oil because that will uh, that will make your painting uh, uh, that will make your painting get yellow uh, faster, right? It's, uh, oil paint is gonna get yellow anyways, but if you try to, you know, if you put another layer of, of oil on top of a, of a dry paint, it's gonna probably get get uh, yellow a little bit faster. So that's why um, try to oil out with something that is less yellow. So try to cut the the, the oil a little bit with uh, turpenoid. So once you coat your painting with that thin layer of tur of half and half. Um, I also like to go one step um, uh, further and use a makeup sponge and take off all the extra, uh, you know, the excess of oil. Just make sure that it's, uh, it's applied evenly and it doesn't have like puddles anywhere. So that's, um, that's the oil out step. And this step is very important. You should not start a painting. Uh, that has been dried without oil uh, the segment or the zone that you're going to paint. So as I said, and is um, in this final layer. So I'm trying to revise basically <clears throat> each each segment, uh, trying to see what else can I do in the background if I if I need to maybe uh, you know get some uh, get a little bit softer transitions if I need to bring my values lighter. So that means stretching my value range, uh, lighter, lighter, uh, some darker. Uh, maybe I leave the, the the shadows the way they are, but maybe I start. Uh, applying the reflected light in this stage, uh, the reflected light of the lemon on the bowl. Um, I'm softening the edge of the background. Um, I make sure I have accents. Like in the bottom, in the bottom of the of the lemon, there's going to be a dark accent. Um, in the bottom of the bowl, there's going to be another dark accent. I'm going to make sure that I bring the uh, reflected, um, you know, the reflected light in the bowl. I'm going to start painting that at some point but it's not going to be too too bright remember reflected light on shadow is still a shadow you know it's going to be on a shadow so it shouldn't be as light as anything on the light Thank you. 
I think this is a good opportunity also to um, you know, take a look at your at your poster study and um, just remember the the first impression that um, that you you cut on your painting uh, with uh, with the color uh, because uh, the fish is getting getting old you know it's, it's, it's not as fresh as the first day uh, so some of the color change so <clears throat> although I don't want to uh, paint something that I'm not seeing uh, right now um, I, I'm gonna rely also uh, in terms of some color notes uh, for this for this um, last uh, stage of the painting so I'm looking at my color study and seeing okay there's some um, kind of like this vibrant uh, red or vibrant yellow here and there's a little bit of more uh, blue in this part or things like that that I am I'm able to uh, you know add a little bit uh, in this stage on top of the form that is already done another thing that is really important uh, at this point is uh, you wanna you wanna constantly step back from your painting uh, because you know uh, I've been spending uh, a lot of days like two or three days looking at the same thing so my brain is getting tired and it's just getting used to the same image so what you want to do is uh, you know step back and see um, step back go, come back to your painting and check your uh, you know check your relationships um, you don't want to maybe add too much of detail too many details add too many um, uh, new new things on your painting that is going to take off that nice uh, freshness that it had um, at the beginning so you want to be careful like the less layer you, you want to add a couple of things by not really uh, putting too much right so what I do um, what I do constantly is uh, you know, I step back I also take a mirror and I look my painting through the mirror I look the painting and the, and the still life both in the same um, kind of like this on the same picture plane I look them both through the mirror I also like to take a picture with my phone and I like to flip the picture on the phone and see it in reverse so that gives me kind of like fresh eyes to see the painting and to maybe judge um, you know judge my steps and what I'm doing um, so yeah basically this 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 final stage uh, there's not too much to say honestly um, nobody can tell you how to finish a painting that's something very personal uh, this is I knew this was gonna be three sessions and it's a pretty fast painting for a painting in layers um, you know it, it only has uh, four elements but um, uh, and I did it for this uh, for the purpose of this video so uh, I know I'm gonna finish today and I'm just gonna push my my painting the best I can just to kind of like get all these nice effects at the end so what I'm what I'm trying to um, uh, to keep working is is um, you know each part just make it a little bit uh, more finish uh, and maybe the transitions uh, and also spending some time on the contours and see which contours are going to get a little bit sharper some ones are going to get a little bit um, uh, softer and at the same time you know bringing my highlights a little bit thicker so I like I like to have some impasto in the in the, in the lights more than in in the shadows usually the shadows I like them pretty flat as I was saying in the in the uh, uh, previous chapter so I'm gonna leave my shadows um, still flat um, and more transparent so if I'm doing glazing I will do that on the sh on the shadow side but if I'm you know if I'm, I'm, if I'm making some impastos uh, so that's a thicker painting uh, and I'm doing some um, uh, scambling which is um, an opaque uh, application oily opaque application very similar to glazing but it has um, opacity has white uh, if I'm doing that I'm also putting that on the lights so I'm trying to determine like just step by step really not really um, spending too much time um, fixing anything or turning anything
right here I like to um, glaze some uh, red umber or something warm um, on on the shadow side against the, um, the the light in the in the lemon uh, that nice warm against the uh, the light it gives um, some kind of like a glowy effect like the the light is heating the, the skin of the of the lemon and splashing back into the into the uh, into the space into the air so it's a uh, it's just a nice effect that uh, gives like the warm against um, that kind of bright so it's a warm dark against um, a lighter um, a lighter uh, note uh, of the lemon uh, as you can see I'm also adding the accent underneath the the lemon that kind of like that uh, uh, cast shadow on on the table and a little bit of the penumbra like a, a softer edge of the cast shadow on the table um, the reflected of the um, skin of the lemon on the surface of the table that's also a very transparent um, application uh, and at the same time you know we can get into the um, into the little t uh, details of the cracks of the wood on the table so all this stuff make sure yeah that table is straight um, yeah, you don't want a wobbling table so I was kind of like aware of that um, at the same time so all these little um, edges uh, you know the, that edge of the table is closer to me so um, I'm seeing some of the detail but I don't want to over detail this painting so uh, some of that some of that edge is a little bit sharper than for example the edge of the bowl and um, in the in the bottom like at, at the at the in the background there's uh, the edge of the bowl is a little bit softer than the edge of the table it's just because the edge of the table is a little bit closer to us um, all right, so um, one one of the last things I'm going to mention about uh, uh, light is uh, the reflected light that I just put on the bowl. The reflected light is um, inside the the shadow, right? So reflected light on the shadow is still part of the shadow. So keep in mind that reflected light cannot be lighter, as light as anything on the light zone. So you have to squint and make sure you don't you don't get tricked by uh, simultaneous contrast uh, because there is a there is that light um, inside a darker uh, or surrounded by dark you you will see that pretty light so be careful of making uh, simultaneous contrast uh, on the reflected light be careful for be careful with bringing the, the shadows um, too contrasty and too noisy or uh, disrupting the uh, the overall uh, value darker value uh, of the shadow and uh, you know you don't want to do that at the end of the painting one of the last things I'm going to um, take care of uh, before finishing the painting is um, to make sure that the edge uh, that is pushed uh, far away is softer then the edge uh, closer to us um, on the table. So I'm using a fan brush to soften in a little bit that edge. Alright, so um, this is it. This is the end of the uh, painting demonstration. I hope you enjoy uh, watching the video as much as I, I did uh, making it and, and painting this from life. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. If you like the video, 
you can also um, subscribe the channel and um, that way we can keep in touch um, yeah thank you for watching bye